And moving swiftly on, the next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 13293 in the name of Clare Baker on promoting responsible off-road motorbike and quad bike ownership. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I'd invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I would also invite members once again who are leaving the chamber to do so quickly and quietly and indeed invite members of the public who are leaving the debating chamber also to leave quickly and quietly, please. Ms Baker, you have seven minutes. Um, thank you, President Officer. I am pleased to be able to secure this debate this afternoon and I thank members from around the chamber who have supported the motion. Um, I hope this can be a constructive debate. I am sure members will be keen to reflect the experiences of their constituents and contribute towards finding solutions. Um, I would also like to welcome Sheila Cooper to the gallery this afternoon. Uh, Sheila's dog Millie died following a collision with an off-road motorbike. Um, this is a current court case, so I won't say any more about the incident, but this has been very traumatic for Sheila. She is now campaigning for action on illegal bike use and has collected over 15,000 signatures in support of her campaign. And I'm pleased that today's debate provides opportunity to highlight her hard work. Um, I'd also like to welcome David Payton and Gordon Gurley from Kingdom Off-Road Motorcycle Club. And while I expect much of this debate will be about problematic off-road biking, clubs such as Kingdoms do offer opportunities for people to learn and enjoy an exciting and exhilarating sport and offer part of the solution to these challenges, and I'll say more about that later. The popularity of quad bikes and off-road bikes has grown in recent years. Um, with an increase in cheap imports, off-road bikes, quads and mini motorbikes are now much more accessible and affordable than ever before, and all ages are attracted to bikes. So bike ownership and the desire to enjoy these bikes is not going away. How do we support responsible ownership and deal with the negative impacts of illegal off-road biking? As the popularity and accessibility of these bikes grow, there has been an increase in reports of antisocial behaviour, with communities being blighted by noise pollution. In addition, people have been threatened by antisocial behaviour in public parks, footpaths and pavements. And as an example, recently in Kirkcaldy, nursery staff with small children who were playing in Beveridge Park reported being alarmed and threatened by people who were tearing around on off-road bikes. These off-road bikes can be ridden on private land with the landowner's permission, but other activity is illegal. In talking about antisocial behaviour, we often assume that it's teenagers, but that is not the experience in Mid Scotland and Fife, where adults have also been involved in dangerous and disruptive behaviour. And because of this irresponsible behaviour, too many people are not feeling safe in their community, and that is not acceptable. And people report to me that when they challenge this behaviour, they often receive abuse and feel further threatened. And earlier this year in Fife, another dog was injured in a collision, and at the time the police comment was, it is by pure chance that the dog's owner was not injured in this incident. And once again, this incident reinforces the danger posed to pedestrians by the illegal use of motorbikes on and off road. This is the threat that people are living with. I've also had conversations with farmers in Fife whose land has been damaged, causing thousands of pounds worth of damage to their crops. And efforts to restrict access through gates leading has led to chains being cut, um, and hoods and balaclavas mean that CCTV hasn't been much use. Constituents have also expressed to me their frustrations in phoning the 101 number with this matter. I have reports of lengthy waits for the phone to be answered, lack of local knowledge on the phone, and frustration that they can't contact the local officer. And the Minister will have heard these concerns before. Um, in Fife, we have local police running Operation Ducati in the Leavenmouth area, and Operation Fireblade has recently launched in Kirkcaldy. Um, they are making efforts to clamp down on those using their bikes illegally on and off road, including arrests. Officers cannot pursue, pursue offenders, but they are working to identify those responsible and take action to stop their behaviour. And I do very much appreciate the steps uh, the police and fire are taking. I know that in other areas, um, officers use bikes themselves to contain illegal activity. And if, if this is effective, we should look at greater use of this. But we must ensure that the police have all the tools in their box to deal with this. In discussions with stakeholders, strengthening fixed penalty notices has been highlighted as a way to give the police more options to deal with antisocial behaviour, and the Minister may wish to comment on that in closing. Um, police can use powers to seize bikes from owners. In some cases, this might give respite, uh, sorry, in some cases this might resolve the issue, but in others, um, it only gives respite. 
And last year in Fife, theft of quad bikes and off-road bikes doubled, with 43 bikes being reported as stolen in one year. We could also look at changing the licensing system for off-road bikes. Um, under current rules, an off-road vehicle doesn't have to be taxed or registered. Um, DVLA have introduced an off-road register where you can record your off-road bike and that would help police if it were stolen. However, there is the view that mandatory registration should be introduced for all bikes. This is seen as a way to encourage responsible ownership, properly record details of the owners and trace bikes. On the other hand, many off-road bikes are not suitable for on-road usage and is it proportionate to introduce this level of registration for recreational bikes if they are used responsibly? Um, DVLA is reserved, but we should consider the merits of registration and whether we may want to re representation on this matter. So a full police response is important. It recognises the severity of the activity and deals with criminal behaviour as well as providing assurance to the public. However, this is a complex issue and we need an, a holistic approach to the problem. We need to stress the importance of education to encourage responsible off-road activity and raise awareness among owners. What can the government do to increase responsible ownership? Is there a need for an awareness raising campaign among retailers to encourage responsible sales and for buyers to have a full understanding of the law? We also need to support opportunities for recreational use for everyone and focus on diversionary activity for some problematic users where behaviour change could be achieved. Kingdom Off-Road Motorcycle Club are planning to run a summer programme in the next few weeks. They will work with young people who are referred to them by SACRO and the police. And these young people will learn bike maintenance skills, bike safety and responsible behaviour. Kingdom first ran a pilot in 2009 that was successful in reducing problematic behaviour. Now, this kind of programme won't address all antisocial behaviour, and the use of these bikes is sometimes involved in much more serious criminal activity, but it can make a difference to the behaviour of young people, which will give us a more longer-lasting, more sustainable solution to these problems. In addition to this, the availability of legitimate opportunities to enjoy off-road biking is also part of the solution. I am um, supportive of efforts by Kingdom Off-Road Motorcycles to establish an indoor motor track in Leavenmouth. The proposed model would give access to affordable, accessible, legal off-road biking within controlled conditions. It could also encourage responsible ownership, offer skills development, provide employment and aim to get bikes off the streets in communities of Leavenmouth and Fife. I wish them well with this project. And, presiding officer, we have a responsibility to respond to this problem. We cannot be complacent about the degree of off-road illegal motorbiking and the accompanying antisocial behaviour which is happening in some of our communities, and we must take action, action to stop it. Many thanks. I now call on David Torrance to be followed by Paul Martin. Thank you, presiding officer. I would like to thank Claire Baker for bringing this motion to Parliament and to welcome this opportunity to speak about promoting responsible off-road motorbikes and quad bike ownership. <clears throat> Unfortunately, in the last few years in Kirkcaldy constituency, which I represent, there has been an increasing number of people who have motorbikes and quad bikes who, use, who are not using them in a responsible and appropriate way. There have always been recorded instances of people using bi bikes causing problems in various ways within the community. However, the number of constituent cases I have dealt with recently have escalated significantly. There are many areas of land and open spaces within my constituency that lend themselves to the ideal locations for off-road motorbikes and quad bike activity, particularly in the Leave Mouth area. These areas are now being utilised by irresponsible bike owners to the detriment of those living in the surrounding area. The activities engaged in by their bike owners are often taking place in unsocial bars and in a way that is hazardous not only to themselves but to others. I have been out at some of these locations to talk with residents and see for myself the impact that it is having. The land used for the biking is churned up and often left in need of repair by a farmer or landover. This is not only time consuming for them, but often costly. However, in many ways, and perhaps more significantly, is the distress caused to residents in the immediate vicinity by the noise and the continued worry, especially by those with families and pets, that a serious accident will occur. In March this year, a couple lost their pet, Millie, which was knocked down and killed by a man on an off-road motorbike which they were out walking on waste ground in Methil. The loss of a much-loved pet led to the owner Stat Millie's plea petition, calling for an end of off-road motorcycle menaces in the area. In April, they were close to reaching 15,000 signatures. This gives a clear indication of a strength of feeling by a community of the severity of a problem caused by these bikes. The bikers involved in the activity are also placing themselves at risk. 
Recently, a young biker was seriously injured and broke his back while quad, quad biking on the coal bank and had to be airlifted to Royal, Edinburgh Royal Infirmary. I have spoken with the community inspector for the Leave Mouth area and through correspondence on various occasions expressed my concerns and those of my constituents in an effort to find a resolution to this problem being faced. The police are very aware of the issue and have been involved in and have worked hard to ensure the safety of all concerned. This led to the information of Operation Ducati in 2014 and is still ongoing, a local police initiative aimed at targeting those involved in the illegal use of motorbikes and off-road. Since its inception, the police have yielded some positive results, both in apprehending offenders and in reducing the number of incidents occurring. However, there are certain legal restraints on the police applicable to those particular, particular issues which need to be addressed and they are cognizant of all at all times that the safety of both the public and those participating in the illegal use of these bikes must be of paramount importance. Essential that all venues are explored to heighten awareness of what can be done to solve the problem of illegal and dangerous off-road biking before anyone is killed. The bikers need to be made fully aware that they are breaking the law, not only by riding these vehicles without plates, a license or insurance, but they are simply riding the bikes on land not owned by themselves and that they are doing so face the possibility of having their bikes confiscated. In order for police to continue to address this problem, parents and the general public need to be made aware of the vital part they can play by reporting instances of antisocial behaviour, as this will help the police to identify those responsible for the nuisance so they can take action. Many people enjoy biking in different forms in a safe and responsible a responsible way as possible, and are members of off-road motorcycle clubs, and it is essential that we, do, that we educate all these young people interested in off-road biking in whatever form is the best and safest way to participate in this activity, and to, to try and guide them to appropriate and safe venues and to follow and enjoy the activity like Kingdom Off-Road Bikes. Presiding officer, I would like to finish by saying I would encourage owners to register bikes through the DVLA's voluntary registration scheme and will support the consider consideration of a mandatory registration for induction across the UK. Many thanks. I now call on Paul Martin to be followed by Murdo Fraser. Uh, President Officer, can I uh, firstly uh, congratulate Claire Baker on uh, a contribution and also uh, recognise the petition which she advises of uh, today. And can I say, uh, I'll be one of those people who will be adding my name to the 15,000 a uh, strong petition. I think this is a, a serious issue that Ms Cooper has raised through uh, Claire Baker and it's one that we should take seriously in this chamber and it's one that I've pursued in this chamber on a number of occasions, uh, not just with the current uh, Scottish Government but previously and way back, as far back as prior to the uh, Antisocial Behaviour Act where I brought forward uh, an amendment to the Act which has allowed police officers to recover the bikes, uh, to repossess them and to ensure that these individuals can't continue with their activities. I've got to say locally, uh, I commend, and I don't always say this in respect to policing activities, but I commend some of the excellent work uh, locally led by Inspector Gormley in my constituency in recovering uh, a number of off-road uh, vehicles uh, and activities uh, of the officers who have led the operations to detect these individuals. And I think as Claire Baker has set out, it's not always teenagers who are involved in these activities. And I have witnessed uh, adjacent to where I uh, live adults riding in off-road vehicles with their children, which I find uh, unacceptable. Uh, and I think we should take action to ensure uh, that these adults and, of course, uh, children are both informed of the serious dangers associated uh, with uh, such activities, but also the, the risk that they pose to others around them who are going about their law-abiding uh, business. And I think the fact that we've got this legislation in place, the fact that it is being enforced by the police effectively, in my experience, means that we have to ensure that further powers are available to deal with it. And I think the issue of DVLA uh, registration is crucial uh, in this debate, because if we are serious about tackling this issue, then we need to know where the bikes have been registered in the first place. Uh, and the officers have... Uh, discussed this matter with have advised me that yes they have local intelligence that can tell them uh, where the bikes uh, are located uh, but it tends to be not the most sophisticated uh, intelligence process for them and to have 
a registration place, a process in place to allow them to be able to detect these individuals as a result of that would be a, a very important part of the tool that would be available to them in that respect. I can also say I think parents play a crucial role in this place. I cannot for the life of me understand why parents would purchase a quad bike for their children and allow them uh, to, to ride that particular vehicle in an area that has not been properly monitored, such as the one that was referred to by Claire Baker uh, in the Kingdom facility. Of course, people are entitled to purchase these kind of vehicles if they want their children to be entertained, but it should be in the proper environment. And I think action uh, has to be considered for parents who allow this irresponsible activity to take place. Uh, and they should take action. And I've spoke uh, with housing providers in my area uh, about them ensuring that action is taken uh, where tenancies, where children are involved in antisocial activity to ensure that we can move this uh, issue forward. So can I just say in conclusion, President Oster, I think this issue has been raised in this chamber on a number of occasions. Uh, we cannot underestimate the serious dangers that these bikes pose in their own hands unless we are willing to take action and recognise that it's not just an issue that affects the rural parts of the constituencies represented in this parliament. It also affects many urban communities where these bikes are falling into their own hands. I think it's extremely important that we look at action being taken by the government uh, and representations are made to the DVLA to ensure compulsory registration uh, of off-the-road vehicles. Many thanks. Yeah, now Colin Murder Fraser, after which we'll move to the closing speech from the Minister. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by congratulating Claire Baker on securing uh, this uh, debate? Uh, Antisocial behaviour is a problem for communities across Scotland and is even more challenging in some rural communities where the absence of entertainment and other opportunities can exacerbate the problem. Now, as we've heard, unfortunately, the use of quad bikes and off-road vehicles to commit antisocial crimes is becoming increasingly common. At its worst, irresponsible owners terrorise communities and can cause serious damage to farmland and other productive areas. And I would support any initiative to promote responsible vehicle ownership, and I would commend the suggestions brought forward by Claire Baker. Claire Baker has already spoken at length about the success of Operation Ducati in helping tackle antisocial quad bike ownership, and I would like to commend officers and Fife for all their hard work in helping curb uh, this issue. We would all agree that good policing has a big role to play in reducing irresponsible ownership and use of these vehicles. I have always believed that a local approach should be taken towards tackling antisocial crimes. And while this debate is not about the merits of the single police force, I am concerned that its creation has robbed some areas of a targeted local policing uh, strategy. Any officer on the beat would agree that local knowledge is invaluable when dealing with antisocial behaviour, and I would encourage Police Scotland to consider how best to deploy resources in order to combat these crimes. On a national level, as we've heard, the UK Government is working hard to encourage responsible ownership, and I would uh, call on vehicle owners throughout uh, Mid-Scotland and Fife, and indeed across Scotland, to voluntarily register their bikes with the DVLA. It is a simple step which can help protect owners against theft and also help reduce rural crime. Thieves, as we know, are quick to target farm vehicles as an easy hit due to their lack of traceability and their strong resale value. And a registered bike gives the police much greater chance of recovery. However, we do have to be careful in this debate not to tar all quad bike owners with the same brush, as there are many responsible owners out there in the cross uh, the region I represent, off-road biking is an emerging industry that is sustaining a large number of rural jobs. Claire Baker talked to some of the activities happening in Fife, uh, in the uh, Highland Perthshire area, another part of the region we represent. Uh, we see uh, quad biking in a number of uh, localities. It's becoming a, a mecca for off-road thrill-seekers. So companies like Scottish Quads, Highland Off-Road, uh, Activates, the Perthshire Off-Road Driving Centre, and Pitt Lockery's Outdoor Activity Centre are just a few of the places offering quad bike treks through beautiful Perthshire countryside. Now, as someone who takes a very thorough approach to the debate preparation, I had the foresight some years ago to visit Scottish quads and take on one of their trails. And not only are these courses a great deal of fun, but there is a focus on safety and respect for the natural environment. 
and I would encourage other members who are interested to go on their own fact-finding missions uh, in Perthshire or elsewhere. Now, in addition to those who ride their motor and quad bikes in an antisocial manner, there are also instances of 4 by 4 owners driving inappropriately on remote highland roads. I remember a few years ago there was a big issue on the Coriatic Pass between Fort Augustus and Lagan with 4x4 vehicles using uh, what was General Wade's uh, military road and causing a great deal of damage. And this impact, the impact of this type of behaviour on fragile highland roads can be just as dangerous as riding motorbikes and quad bikes recklessly in more residential areas. Tackling both of these issues will require a degree of community engagement and I would call on members of the public to report these crimes when they see them. So in conclusion, I think it is important that the Scottish Government supports and promotes the DVLA voluntary registration scheme, as this could play a central role in apprehending thieves and irresponsible owners. I would encourage local residents to report irresponsible owners to the police as a first step. But curbing dangerous bike riders will require a strategy that works with owners, with the police and members of the public. And I will take time to monitor this issue over the coming months. And can I close by thanking Claire Baker once again for bringing this important issue to the Chamber. Many thanks. And we now move to the closing speech from the Minister, Paul Wheelhouse. Minister, you have seven minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And um, I'm pleased to respond on behalf of the Scottish Government. I do congratulate Claire Baker uh, for securing this debate, which brings a focus on the dangers caused by irresponsible use of quad bikes and other off-road vehicles. And I've certainly been keen to engage with Claire Baker on this issue in terms of meeting with Claire uh, Baker already uh, on this matter. So I know she's taken it uh, seriously for some time. I agree that vehicles such as quad bikes, and indeed I take Myrtle Fraser's point regarding four by fours uh, off-road uh, and using inappropriate roads as well, need to be used responsibly by, and are used responsibly by the majority of people for recreational enjoyment through membership of official off-road vehicle clubs, such as the, the Kingdom Off-Road uh, Motorcycle Club that uh, Claire Baker refers to, um, or indeed uh, through private businesses that uh, uh, Myrtle Fraser referred to. I've, I've participated in activities in Perthshire myself, with uh, Nay Limits, I think is the, the company based in that area, and very much enjoyed it in an organised and safe environment to, to try a quad bike. We also have to acknowledge, though, that, um, and they do support jobs, we also have to acknowledge the, the problem of antisocial use of such vehicles, which has previously been highlighted and discussed in this chamber. And Paul Martin is absolutely right on that point. It's a, an issue of long standing debate in the chamber. And I'd like to express my own uh, personal sympathies and those of the Scottish Government to, uh, to Sheila Cooper, uh, Claire Baker, and, and, uh, and uh, David Torrance, constituent, uh, who's present in the chamber today. I won't uh, go into the detail of that, but I very much sympathise with the situation that um, uh, Sheila Cooper finds herself in. A key aim of the Scottish Government is to ensure that everyone feels safe in their community and is able to go about their business in peace. It's completely unacceptable, though, for people to be afraid to use public spaces which were designed for all to share and to improve the quality of life uh, within their communities. I am aware that inappropriate use of quad bikes can place a financial burden on our communities through damage to agricultural land, a number of members referred to that, or repair costs to local authority land and property. I entirely take the point, I'm about to make a reference to really about entirely take the point that Paul Martin has made this is an urban as well as a rural issue, and I very much recognise that. But only recently I heard a report about a farmer in Fife who suffered hundreds of pounds of damage to his wheat crops because of the misuse of these vehicles, and this cannot be tolerated. There are provisions contained within the Antisocial Behaviour Act allowing police officers to seize vehicles that are being used antisocially, although I appreciate it can be difficult, and it is difficult in many cases, for the police to apprehend individuals at the time of the offence. However, information from concerned citizens can help officers identify those responsible, and this should also be encouraged. Following my meeting with Claire Baker in January this year, discussions have taken place with Police Scotland about improving the recording of vehicles seized under antisocial behaviour legislation. Uh, I am pleased to confirm that new police data management system introduced in February will allow better recording of this data and this will help to inform the development of policy to tackle this issue. That will help both in urban and rural areas as I know Paul Martin has asked similar questions in the past as well and so we are addressing those concerns. Where quad bikes are being used on the road, they must be appropriately registered, taxed and have an MOT. However, since most quad bikes do not meet road safety standards, they must not be used on the roads and the lack of a compulsory registration scheme means such vehicles are easy to sell on if they are stolen and difficult for the police to ascertain who has uh, owned the vehicle to, to recover it and send it back to its original owner. I'm therefore uh, supportive of any initiative that may help prevent theft of quad bikes or other off-road vehicles and that encourages registration so that owners can easily be traced. Such claims are clearly... 
I will indeed, President. Paul Martin. I just wonder, though, in taking that forward, whether the Minister would consider making representations uh, to Westminster uh, to require uh, such vehicles to be registered. Paul well, I will happily address that point. I am coming on to that point, Mr Martin, so hopefully uh, I, I will uh, address that directly. Uh, but um, we do, uh, such schemes are clearly in the interest of the owners as well as those enforcing the law. The licensing of, uh, of vehicles is a matter reserved to the UK Government and we recognise that, although we cannot make the registration of vehicles compulsory ourselves. The DVLE operates a voluntary off-road registration scheme that a number of members have mentioned. The DVLA has advised me, we have corresponded with the DVLA on this issue, that details of vehicles registered under the scheme are held in both the DVLA's database and the police national computer. And the scheme is free, and I want to stress that it's entirely free for people to register a vehicle, and I am committed to promoting it widely throughout Scotland. Uh, this will be a, a, a first step, clearly. Therefore, as well as um, making information on the scheme available through the Scottish Government website, I will be encouraging its use through local authority anti-social behaviour officers, the National Farmers Union uh, Scotland, uh, Police Scotland, Farmwatch, the Scottish Crofting Federation and any other organisation that has an interest in tackling the anti-social use of these vehicles and preventing the theft of those vehicles from businesses and causing them financial difficulties in replacing them. Um, I, uh, before I come to the end, I, I just want to, to address... Uh, I will briefly. Uh, just Mark to clarify on. the point, though, the individuals that we are dealing with here uh, won't voluntarily register their vehicles. So, that, so the compulsory process of this will ensure that they do register the vehicles. We're not we're targeting individuals who just won't register them. Mr. I, I'm happy to address that issue, uh, Presiding Officer. What we're, what we're stressing is here, we, we know that, as Claire Baker identified, there are some, uh, obviously, vehicles that are bought for, for private use and some cheaper vehicles are now in the market. But we know that uh, potentially some of the vehicles are stolen. The police cannot prove those vehicles are stolen. What we want to do is be able to choke off the supply of vehicles that come from uh, being stolen from agricultural businesses and other land-based businesses uh, and find those getting into the system. So if we can choke off that, that supply of vehicles, we'll hopefully be able to concentrate on the retail end and get the responsible uh, uh, registration of vehicles there as well. So there's a number of issues we have to address. I, I take Mr Martin's point entirely, um, but we, we do um, have to try and uh, find a way of reducing the number of thefts uh, of vehicles, uh, which uh, Claire Baker identified a number over 40 in Fife alone, and clearly across the country, uh, we're trying to get a handle on exactly how many are finding their way through that route, perhaps for export, but also staying in Scotland and being used illegally. Um, but uh, a number of points were raised earlier on. I want to address um, Murdo Fraser's point about local policing, because I think it's an important one. Uh, I'm not uh, ex expecting uh, overnight support for Police Scotland for Murdo Fraser, but uh, in, in respect of the merger. But one thing I would stress is the opportunity at Police Scotland, which I hope local communities do seize, is the opportunity to have a local policing plan for every ward in Scotland. And it's really important the kind of evidence that David Torrance talked of being gathered uh, from his constituents and Claire Baker from hers, Paul Martin from his, and indeed from Murder Fraser, that we feed that into Police Scotland and make sure the local policing plans reflect community concerns. And that is an opportunity I hope that the members here present seize. Uh, in terms of, uh, I take the point entirely made, further, Murder Fraser made about um, many responsible off-road uh, bikers and I, I think that we, we shouldn't tar everyone with this brush. There are uh, legitimate activities going on but we do have to ask people to respect uh, private land, uh, the environment which is a very good point and indeed the safety of the public which is paramount in addressing that. Um, I very much congratulate the likes of Kingdom Off-Road Motorcycles and indeed other businesses and, and organisations for providing opportunities safely uh, and diversionary activities in effect to keep people away from doing this illegally and in an organised, regulated and safe environment. So that's that's great to see that happening at a local level. But I take the point um, that was made earlier on by, uh, by members to, to look at what we can do with retailers. So I will, I will take that away to see if we can do anything to encourage uh, voluntary registration through retailers. Um, but I just reiterate the point. Um, we are pleased to hear police officers are using seizure vehicle powers granted to them under the Anti-Social Behaviour Act's provisions through Operation Ducati. I welcome members' support for that and indeed uh, for work in Glasgow uh, that Paul Martin mentioned. I share your concerns about the blight inconsiderate driving off-road vehicles has on both our rural and urban communities and will arrange for information to be provided on the Scottish Government's website raising public awareness of the DVLA's voluntary registration scheme. We cannot, unfortunately, force it to become compulsory. We'll continue a dialogue with the DVLA and UK ministers on this issue. But by working together, we can tackle the antisocial use of off-road vehicles and make our communities safer for all. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And thank you, and thank you all for taking part in this important debate, and I now suspend Parliament until 2.30.